Now, microhydro is just what it says. It's small hydropower. Hydropower is basically a way of converting the kinetic energy of water into electricity. Very similar to wind, except the fluid that you're capturing kinetic energy from is now water, and specifically water flowing in streams. And um, there really are, there are um, two types of microhydro. There's low head and high head. Okay? Head just refers, it's an engineering term that refers to pressure. Okay? So uh, uh, if a stream, you have a steep stream flowing down a mountainside, that's a high head uh, situation. You have a lot of water pressure developed because of the high, you know, because of the uh, elevation. So in low head is a type of system to capture kinetic energy from less steep streams, like a, you know, it could be a, a meandering stream with just a minimal current flow. So you can gather microhydro from either kind. You can, there, there are microhydro systems for both types. Um, it really is microhydro, uh, both types of streams, it really is just another type of solar energy because the reason water gets where it gets up in the mountaintops and is because of evaporation caused by solar energy. So solar, so it really is another type of solar energy. Water evaporates, it deposits as rain, and then it's deposited in rain and snow, and then that snow melts or the rain <clears throat> washes into streams and, and forms streams. And of course, gravity plays a big role here as well, uh, the function of gravity. So it's another form of energy. And, and as I mentioned earlier, it's limited applicability. Although if you do have a, a slow-moving stream through your property with some slope, there are possibilities. There are ways to capture, take a little bit of that water out run it in a pipeline along the side of the stream and dump it back in through a low head microhydro turbine. Okay? Um, <clears throat> potential is pretty limited for most people. This is, the, this is a typical uh, micro turbine for a high head system. You'll see the way this works is here's, here's the, uh, well, first of all, here's the pipe that brings water in from the stream. And let's see, did I have a diagram? Let me, let me backtrack just real quickly. Here's kind of the anatomy of a microhydro system. Here's, here's a stream, of course, um, flowing down a hillside. There, you need some kind of an intake structure, just a small diversion structure on the stream. You don't need to dam the whole stream, preferable not to dam the whole stream, but uh, a little intake structure of some sort with a screen to keep garbage, you know, leaves and twigs and uh, from, from clogging up the works. You really don't want any solid material flowing down here and uh, either jamming up into your, into your pipe or uh, you know, trying to sh shoot out through those little nozzles. So you really you have to screen it. And this gets real challenging, quite honestly, because there is a lot of debris in streams. So it becomes quite a challenge to keep that, uh, that diversion structure at inlet free, and there's special screens they make. They're sloped screens that will actually repel um, debris and floating logs. So it, it, you can imagine it's really quite a challenge. And the water then is sent down a hillside through uh, pipe, usually PVC or polyethylene pipe, even steel pipe. I've seen in some situations that we've got a project in Canada we're doing right now in a very, very steep terrain. And um, we're using steel pipe in certain areas where the pressure is real high. We don't, want it, we don't want it to blow out. You can use 20, 20 foot uh, PVC pipe, or uh, we often, or the project we're doing up in Canada, we're using long, long rolls of polyethylene pipe, so we don't have a lot of seams, a lot of joints to make in that pipe. Um, and so, so the water flows downhill, gaining speed as it goes through this, uh, down, the, down the hill. And it squirts out a little set of nozzles, and it turns the turbine just like the blades of a wind turbine. It turns the it turns this uh, this um, um, wheel here, and and it causes it to spin. That wheel is attached to a a shaft, which is attached to a generator. So just like a wind turbine, same technology, identical technology, but usually a lot smaller. So you've got a you've got a ro essentially a rotor or something that spins when the water shoots against it, and that turns a, turns a shaft, which turns the inner workings of an alternator. And it, so it produces alternating current electricity. Then the water shoots out here back into the stream. And one of the big challenges of this is, of course, not to take, is to be able to take enough water to generate power without disturbing 
the ecology of the stream. So it's really important that to, to um, look very carefully at the amount of water you need to take and how it's going to affect the stream. Now, it's not easy to do. You don't really have to bring in a, a specialist, a biologist, or an aquatic biologist who can help, um, help you sort out what it, what's going to work best. And this is a pretty neat resource. What, what I like about it is a lot of the systems are pretty small wattage. They're not really watt, you know, high wattage units. It might be 100 or 200 watts, um, which is pretty small. You know, a wind turbine, a couple hundred watts. I wouldn't even put one up. I mean, it's so, it's so small. The neat thing about this is it's 24 hours a day, 365 days a year in many locations. So you get a, a continuous production of electrical power. And these systems almost always require batteries because you know, it's a small amount of energy over a long period of time, so you need some place to store it. So at night while you're sleeping and the house is pretty much shut down, your batteries are filling up. So during the day you can draw off the batteries to uh, supply, su supply your electrical needs. So here's the, here's the typical turbine. You'll see this, this is called a Pelton wheel. It's just basically uh, bronze, uh, a bronze wheel attached to a central shaft. Water shoots out. These are these. Uh, the wheel has instead of blades, it has little cupped, little cups that, that capture the water or against which the water um, shoots. So the water shoots out these two jets, causes that to spin, and then you can't really see the rest of it. But that it's just basically a typical alternator. Um, <clears throat> more, it's much more limited uh, than wind. Of course, you've got to be located pretty close to a stream. You can't be. Um, transporting electricity long distances. Um, it works best if you have a year-round supply of water. I've seen these systems though in California where, like in Northern California, I've seen them where the streams pretty much dry up in the summer, but they were pretty, you know, during the fall uh, and winter and early spring, they operate, this, there's plenty of rainfall, and so the, the streams supply a pretty good amount of electricity. If that's the situation, you obviously have to have something else, you know, solar for the summer or uh, maybe wind. <clears throat> okay, there are DC generators. Uh, most of them are AC, but there are DC generators as well, and it produces 24 hours a day. Surplus electricity stored in batteries, or um, if here's something that we actually forgot to talk to you about yesterday with wind. In, um, Surplus could be stored into batteries, but if, if you're an off -grid, in an off-grid system and you have the batteries are full, what do you do with that electricity? Okay, off-grid system, battery bank is full. Now, in a PV system, the charge controller basically interrupts the flow of electricity to the batteries. Okay, in a PV system, that charge that's one of the functions of the charge controller. It basically interrupts or blocks the flow of electricity. So once those batteries get full, it stops charging. Um, it's a lot more complicated than that. We'll talk about that in the intro PV course. And it's really ingenious how it's done. Um, in a wind system, off-grid wind system, when the batteries are full, the wind's blowing, um, you've got a serious problem here because you just can't turn off a wind turbine. You can't just switch it off. Um, because if, if you interrupt the power flow, the wind turbine will freewheel. It'll spin faster and faster and faster. So you, you have to protect it. So in a wind system, the surplus electricity, off-grid now, the off-grid system will dump, the surplus electricity will be dumped by the controller into a dump load. And here's an example of a dump loader, uh, into a dump load. It's basically just a resistive heater. It's just a, an element, a heating element. It's placed either in your water heater or it's a space heater like this. So surplus electricity in a wind system, off-grid though, not an on-grid system or grid-connected system, the surplus goes onto the grid, right? But in off-grid system, the surplus goes into a dump load. And same thing with microhydro, because you just can't go out there and shut the, I mean, you, you could, you could go out and you know turn off the flow into the, into the uh, diversion structure, but that's a real pain in the butt. You know, you don't want to be out there in the middle of the night turning it off. So the surplus is dumped into a dump load. It's just um, to create hot water. It's just a little heating element. I'll show you a picture of it. Or to create space 